we, we all know how the designers have put a lot of effort into actually designing in anti-capillary action in their product. But there's still a lot of instances where us installers, if you don't know why capillary action is a problem and that there's certain ways that you have to install this product, then we can actually destroy the anti-capillary action of this product. And there's many instances where this can happen. So here are a few examples of the corrugated roof, how it's been used, and why it's been a problem, just because of how it's been installed. Let's pull this uh, lap up and you'll see what you normally find um, under the lap. So this is a standard lay of your sheet, corrugate, and you'll have an over, and on the underside you'll have a slight curl under lap, and that will just take away any water that is pulled up by capillary, uh, and it will run down and out. Yep. You can see on this one in particular, you can see here these are the water stains here, where the water's kind of pulled up slightly, yep. but generally it's kind of sitting Cause, so what the way a corrugate sheet should sit, it'll kind of sit like this. There's so they don't quite touch here, each other, yeah. Point here, which will hold water. Yeah. And then because there's a gap, a slight gap, yeah, that, it, that it allows, can't climb up and can't then climb it'll and go drop over. back down. Yeah. But you can see here at the bottom, there's a lot of water movement here. Yeah. So what draws the water up the lap? Because it looks like the water's been drawn back up. A, a combination of things. Yeah. Number one, you'll see when I lower this. Yeah. You see, there's a seal that's slightly longer there. Yep. So even that slight detail there will bring water in, yep. will come in. And as well, you can also see these stains on the top. Yep. Shows that as the water comes down, it tends to sit here. It wants to sit and then drip. So if you've got this kind of flat pitch, very low pitch, you've got a high wind area like we've got here, you're going to get a little bit of vibrating in there as well. And that's going to all combine to create a suction. It's going to happen and it's going to suck this back up. And then what happens? It goes close to where that uh, the, the insulation the is, where, uh, where, where the anti-condensation insulation is. This is the anti-condensation, but that will act like a wick yeah. if it gets close enough and it will pull water in. You start to get water movement in here. Yeah. And that's how it gets up. Water uphill, you can see. <laughs> yes, water running uphill. <laughs> yeah. So what is the solution then here, uh, Jeff, you think? Well, number one is you want to have this sheet trimmed back so it's not showing like that. Yep. You can see there's two points showing here. So you want to have, make sure that's definitely, uh, you probably even cut, so you want to keep a nice clean cut on your valley, but you also, once, once you've got this top cut, you probably want to trim this back like this. Yep. Um, number two is actually just the patch. <laughs> We can't do anything about the pitch where if the client doesn't want the whole thing re -root. Yes, I mean like ideally you wouldn't have your, they should never have gone ahead with even allowing this lay because it's three degrees and corrugate is only allowed to be coated up to five. So it's already playing in the grounds that it shouldn't be on here, but it is. But yes, you don't, you trim that back. You can, the other option is you can bend the ends of the sheets down so it causes you can only do it slightly because it will want to tear because it's corrugate, but that will cause the that will guide the water more and direct it to drop yep. down. Yep. But in this particular case, three degrees, eight, you will normally have water drop off the edge. So the main problem is on the laps, yep. the water just being sucked up because you've got the under lap, which is yep. slightly longer than the overlap, yep. which then collects the water and sucks it in. So. Yep. Um, the solution one is to cut the underlap shorter than the yep. overlap so that yep. you don't have uh, that catchment in yep. catching the water in. Yep. Um, now, it's, yeah, this, I mean, uh, I, if you really want to go all, like if clients have a flat roof like this of corrugate, it's that option, then the bend down, and then the, second, the third one would be that you seal this entire lap the whole way up just to prevent any water crossing over into this at all from the top end. Because even if we do trim this back and seal it, you can still get potential capillary water. Water can flow down here. You can see slight, slight bits of water have been running down here, even without this. All right, so it's a combination of uh, making sure that the underlap is shorter than the overlap. 
Yep. And then sealing the laps uh, to get away with a less than five degree pitch on yep. a corrugated roof. Yep. So there's, there's a lot of work and a lot of sealant on the laps. It's yep. not something that you really want no. to do on a roof. You would want to start off doing it right. So if we start from the beginning with the right profile, we would have none of these issues. Now this is all, yeah. Okay, keep going. yeah. This is all the type of thing that you do in hindsight or to fix something that's been done incorrectly. So if you've done something, if you'd followed the rules from the get-go, we wouldn't be in this position and it's, um, but because the rules haven't been followed, we have to come up with a whole lot of solutions and a whole lot of extra work to make something that would should have worked the first time. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and how often do, you, do we come against uh, corrugated roofs less than five degrees? A lot. Unfortunately, a lot. Too much, eh? <laughs> yeah, way too much. 